and welcome to another episode of On the Floor with Wayne and Rob. I'm Wayne Highlander, National Sales Manager for Bona Adhesives. And I'm Rob Johnson from Bona Training. You got a big smile on there? your face today, Wayne. Yes, sir. How you doing there, tough guy? Oh, pretty good, Tiger. Pretty good. How many times have you How ever been you? beat up, Rob? <laughs> when was the last time you got beat up and how many times? When was the last time I got beat up? This year. Um, uh, I don't know if I lost that fight. I mean, it, it was a good tussle. I was still a bouncer. And um, some guy and his girlfriend came in and they were all kind of drugged up on something and i think i told this story before but me and the guy were tangling and the girl run up and hit me and the other guy that i was a bouncer with he grabbed her and cold cocked her like knocked her out wow which gave him superhuman strength and then <laughs> yeah good for you <laughs> yeah I didn't lose that fight. That was not a loss. Yeah. That was definitely a tie. Cops got there yeah. and broke it up, but I didn't okay, cool. lose that one. But the last one that I guarantee I lost, um, it was still when I was playing hockey in the men's league. I don't know. We were married a couple of years, maybe. And, um, you know, so once in a while, like I said before, I couldn't skate. So you can't skate and you're playing hockey. You might as well fight, you know. Mm -hmm just to be a jerk. And um, there was this guy skating warm-ups wearing a Yankee helmet. You know, he's just wearing a Yankee batting helmet just for warm-ups, minding his own business. And um, so I looked at everybody on the team and I go, that guy's a dead man. He's, he'll go down first. You watch, he's your guy. you know, he's my guy, right? You know, he painted a bullseye on him. And plus, you know, playing a tough guy in front of Pauline, the whole deal. Well, we get into the game and I square off with this guy. And I threw threw a punch. You know, I don't know. I don't remember if it landed or whatever. But this guy tossed his glove and hit me. And it felt like somebody had taken a telephone pole and just smashed me right in the face with it like that. And uh, the guys on my team said, you know, you were swinging like crazy on your way down. We'll give you that, you know, and all yeah, I prayed. <laughs> <laughs> I prayed that that everybody just please jump on this guy and keep him yeah. from killing me, you know. Oh, nice. But the the funniest part of this was, you know, that was a beating. That was a one punch beating, right? Yeah. And uh to make sure it never happened again, I skate up to him after the game, extend my hand and say, hey, man, no hard feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, meant, please don't hit please me again. Please don't ever hit me again. Right. Yeah. yeah. Can I see your hand? <laughs> yeah. I hope I didn't hurt it. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to be tough, man. If you're a floor guy, you're tough. Yeah. This is a tough floor business. Guy, floor, Isn't floor it? Guy, floor, floor guy or floor woman. I mean, um, floor yeah, person. it's a tough business. Yeah, yeah, that's a better. Everything's a heavy. Better. Yeah. Everything's loud. Yeah. Everything's hot. Yes. Right? I, I mean, it's... It, it's it's a fight. It is not sometimes. for the meek. No. It is a no. fight. Yeah. Since you asked, the last time I got beat up was in 1976. And I, I don't know where that that kid is today, but I hope she finally got her temper in check. Because going through life like that is no way to go through life. She was pretty tough, huh? Oh, deceivingly tough. Was that in Ireland? No, it was in Kentucky. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, it's tough. It's a tough trade, man. We talk about that a lot and, uh, mental toughness comes into play and physical toughness comes into play. And, uh, I, you, you know, one time my, uh, my brother was, uh, we used to, you know, those things we have, you, you walk so many steps 
you know what I mean? When you're exercising, it'll, it'll tell you how many steps you walk for the day. And yes. uh, he was standing all day with a big, and I can't re remember how many steps, but it's, re it's ridiculous. A floor guy should just run that damn thing over with the machine. I mean, the amount of ups and downs and ups and downs, you know, from the from the from on your knees to the table saw to the chop saw back down to your knees to get the adhesive, I mean, the, I mean, it's a it's a very tough, physically demanding job. So we're going to talk about toughness, tough guys. I put a list together, Rob. You told me you put a list you together. You think you're? <laughs> Let me ask you a question. We all have this in our head. I mean, and especially you. Mm -hmm. You know that there's going to be a Wayne Highlander movie out there pretty soon. I don't know yes. when, but I, I'm assuming that you've gone through way too much not to have a movie or a book or both. I, you I know see what you're going with Yeah, who's yeah. going to play me? Exactly. There's not a lot of redheaded tough guys out there. Oh, man, that hurts. So, uh, that hurts. listen, hey, I know you're one of the tough ones. You might have to play yourself. <laughs> um, Redheaded tough guys. That's embarrassing. It shouldn't be. You know, there, maybe Telly Savalas had red hair. No, but he doesn't count. He doesn't. No one knew him if he was a redhead. I don't know if he was or not, but that doesn't count. But there's one. There's one. Ooh. The young gun himself. Danny Bonaducci. <laughs> He's the only guy I can think of. There isn't the Wayne Highlander story starring Danny, Danny Bonaducci. Bonaducci. I don't think they pay enough. You loved money. him as Danny Partridge. You'll love him yep. even more as Hollywood Wayne Highlander. No redheaded tough guys. That's embarrassing. But I, you know, I, I heard one. when a redheaded guy gets like when we go to the hospital to get knocked out, you know, um, you know, they give us Novocaine or whatever. Or put us under. I I read that it takes like ten percent more to put a redheaded dude under than a, than a normal person. Because of the hell that you've been put through all your life, <laughs> you're immune yes. to pain. That's it. That's right. It should except take less. Except the sun. Except the sun. The sun, is, so the sun is our kryptonite. <laughs> uh, Thirty minutes in the sun, we're done. So when you get Novocaine at the dentist, you tell them, nah, don't worry about it. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. I got red hair. Got to drill away. Yeah. I don't feel yeah. a thing. I actually wanted to tell you uh, uh, an anesthesiologist one time when my one of my seven knee surgeries, seven, eight, seven knee surgeries. I wanted to tell the dude, because someone right before I went in, someone told me a horror story that somebody woke up during the middle of an operation because it wore off or they didn't give him enough uh, anesthesia or whatever. So I felt that like I should tell the dude that, hey man, um, I don't know if you ever heard, man, but yeah, you know, I don't want to tell you how you do your job, but I, I don't know if you've known this before, but it takes more people, more, you know, more of this to knock a redheaded dude out than normal people. And then he told me to count back from a hundred, and I think I got to 97. So <laughs> maybe I'm wrong about that. All right. You know, I, I could be a redhead. I, I, I if could you be... told me a redhead. Yeah, I could be half a redhead because when I had hair, I think you might have seen pictures. When I had hair, it was reddish blonde with a really red beard. So, you know, I could be right there. You know what I mean? We like, could be like brothers. That, like that Viking red hair. Like that, that really good red hair. We do have Norwegian blood in us. Yeah. So there you go. Could be, yeah. yeah. Listen, don't don't try to claim being a redhead, and it makes me sick when I see somebody dye their head their hair red. I want to go up to them and go, "Look, dude, this this is a this is a way of life, man. You don't get to play a redhead for a month because you feel like you want to. You know, it's different for you. This is a way of life, man. This isn't something you play with. This is deeper than that. You can't just come in here and do this for a month or a month and a half because you think it's a cool fashion statement. Get the hell out of here. I take it personally. Well, to make you feel better, Bum took uh, Carrot Top's head and put it on a bunch of tough guys and said, no, no, Wayne's. He put it on Eastwood. He put it on Stallone. Well, it wasn't a good that, look. I, I will say that. Well, see, he, that, that's, a, that's a, he doesn't do redheaded dudes any favors, man. 
because he was a goofy comedian. That's one thing. But then he got built. I mean, did you see how built that dude was? But he, he didn't age very well. That red hair was all crazy on him, man. It just was a whole bad look altogether. But he had to get tough. He had to get tough. He had that red hair and everything. Now who's going to say anything to him? Yeah, well, true. You know, yeah. and most people are going to say is, hey, man, your hair is cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a look. Yeah. He is. Yeah, he did get jacked up, didn't he? Yeah. We're always playing this in our head. Who, who plays you? Who plays you in the movie? Well, this is embarrassing. I can't see like some great looking dude. I, you know what I mean? I can't, I can't go, I can't do that. I can't do some goofball either. Who would play me? It would have to be a man of dignity, of course. Man of distinction. Yeah. Well, is it a young Wayne or is it an old Wayne? Um, middle age. Middle age. I'm going to have to go too old. I'm gonna we don't go need a 60 year old guy. Sean okay, Connery. Right. Yeah. Who is the best James Bond of all time, by the way? Not like this goofball they got right now. Oh, boy. I can't even go there. I think they got a woman going to play Connery this year or uh, oh, Bond this year. I, 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 could, I could go along with that. I thought I read that. Yeah. So, Sean Connery, that's who plays you. I think he's dead. I think he did die. Yes. He did die yeah, recently. I think he too. died recently. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so he really can't play you in the movie that hasn't been made yet, then. Okay, it's got to be okay. I'll I'll go with McConaughey. Why not? Why not shoot for the moon, right? Matthew McConaughey. Wow, that's just a real stretch for him, though. <laughs> I can I can see that. I can see. Where are you that. going with this? I'm not going anywhere with it. I'm just wondering who you got. Okay. Who would play you in the movie? I mean, we all know who would play me. I, people say it to me in the airport. Mr. Clooney, can I have your autograph? You, I definitely yeah. see me in some kind of a romantic comedy, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, I get Yours that. is going to be a drama. Yours is definitely a drama. Yeah. I, I kind of know you like the drama, but... So I know we're always thinking of who plays this in the movie, who would play you, who would play your wife, that kind of thing. Bone has got some tough products, don't you think? 100%. Real tough. Yeah. I see where you're going. All right. I like it. Who would play Who would play uh, each product? Yeah. All right. Let's play that game. All right. So who's going to play Traffic HD in the movie? I don't know, man. This is this is the number one in the industry. Biggest man. product of all time in floor finishing, wouldn't you think? A hundred percent. I mean, it is the the Mac Daddy of it, it changed the industry. So hmm. you know, I'm I, I gotta go with the Duke. I, I I got to go with Traffic HD is the John Wayne of finishes. Boom. That's not bad. That's that's not that's not bad. I'm going Jim Brown. Jim I Brown mean, is a tough guy. I mean, you knew what he was I mean cuz he was okay cuz here's the deal. There's on-screen tough guys and there's real tough guys. That that, that are tough guys no matter what. You look what Jim Jim Brown did in football, beat all the records, flat out stud. He just oozed tough guy. When you saw him in the movie, you know he wasn't there for any other purpose than to be the tough guy. So if I'm going to have someone play that role, I'm going to dig down. And, and also, um, 30 Dozen. Uh, did, you, did you ever see it? 30 Dozen? Oh, oh, God, yeah. I mean, there were so many good yeah. tough guys in that movie. But I'm Look at the Jim tough Brown. guy. There's there's a half a dozen tough guys in that movie. I think Telly some Sabalas. of those. Tell us about that. Yep. They're on the my way, list. Lee Marvin. Lee Marvin, one of the best tough guys. By the way, there hasn't been a tough guy in movies since 1976. 
Oh man. Give me one. There's, there's none. There's none. You there's got your a lot, list? man. All right. We'll go down the I'll list. I'll tell you who. Since 76? Yeah. And and this guy's kind of at the bottom of my list. Sam Elliott. He's not a tough guy. Oh He's not a tough guy at all. Not oh, even remotely close to a tough guy. Oh, come on. He's got you know what he's got? He's got an accent. He's got, the, he's got the tough guy without knowing he's a tough guy. He's just got the look. You got have Some more tough guys look. can just give you a look. They don't have to say anything, man. Jim Brown would beat the hell out of Sam Elliott. <laughs> yeah, but he couldn't beat the hell out of John Wayne. Nobody could beat John Wayne, Dan. That, 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 that was yeah, that's true. John was Wayne is the Mac Daddy. All right. I don't remember his name. Marion something We're, or other. But okay, go ahead. That's good. I like John Wayne's pretty pretty hard to beat. All right. John Wayne's a tough one to beat. Yeah. Just like Traffic HD. You, you ain't going to beat it. No matter what. That could be the new marketing. I wonder if Eileen's going to steal that. Uh, that could happen. Oh, hey, all right. I'll uh, let right, you go. go I'll let you go first on this one. All right, fifty-one. I gotta go with. I gotta go with Clint Eastwood, man. I mean, he's an icon, right? I mean, in every situation you put that dude in, he's gonna come out on top. Um, you. I mean, the guy from Dirty, all the Dirty Harry movies, the Clint Eastwood cowboy movies. Uh, tough, tough character, man. I think it. I think he would. Uh, He'd be a good fit for the R eight fifty one. I like it. Uh, I'm gonna go with Robert Shaw. Who the hell is Robert Shaw? Oh, Where do you get on, these man. tough guys at? You getting these guys off the Hallmark Channel? Robert. You no, know, I thought I would have thought you would like Robert Shaw. He's an Irish guy. Yeah, but he's not a tough or guy. I think he's. I like I think he's well, not tough. Taking a Pelham one, two, three, Jaws, Battle yeah. of the Bulge. This guy yeah. is tough. He's never, there's no cream puff movies. That, look at the guy, for God's sake. Look at his eyes. Those well, I'll tell feet. you what, those sunburns, I mean, those sideburns, sunburns, those sideburns are pretty tough. I'll give him that. You get, and the All hat, right. man. Look at, look at that hat. Oh, if that isn't the, Tough guy, yeah. I don't give a crap hat. Yeah. Looking to impress nobody. Did you ever see that movie, Battle of the Bulge? Uh, no, actually, I have not. He was the German tank commander in Germany's last push, the Battle of the Bulge. Okay. If you haven't seen that movie, watch that movie. And okay. then come back to me and say, I completely apologize. He is, okay. All he right. is a Battle very... Very tough man. All right, I'll put it down. And what about right. uh, taking a Pelham one, two, three? Did you ever see that movie? The, uh, the original. Movie. Yeah. yeah. Oh man, fantastic movie. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. You, I, I could come around to that. Okay. He's uh, he's no uh, he's no Clint Eastwood, but he's pretty pretty tough. All right, I'm going to take this one. Okay. I'm going to go with this one first. I got to go here with Charles Bronson. R540 is the Charles Bronson of your adhesive line. Boom. I, you ever see I don't know. How, I don't know if he's still alive or dead, but I bet that mustache is still growing. He's, he's dead. Um, of the of the entire movie industry, he is the toughest there. He's my number one. There's nobody tougher than Charles Bronson. If you haven't seen How the West Was Won, absolutely. And 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 almost half the scenes was was a, a close up of his face from about eight inches back. And uh, the, in the one particular scene, um, you see him in the in the desert as a young child. And there's a guy standing on his shoulders, right? And you, all you see is a kid sweating to death, struggling in the hot sun and, you know, in the Mexico desert. 
And then as it pans up, it goes, you see there's a guy standing on his shoulders, a big, bigger guy, you know, in his 20s or whatever. And it pans up, it shows his face, and he's sweating, and his whole shirt is full of sweat, and he's got a, a noose around his neck. So the deal is, when that kid can no longer hold up that guy, he's going to, he, he's going to hang himself, right? So the kid, his knees are buckling, and he's, you know, he's struggling to hold this guy up, and he's, you know, and the, and the, and the, the, the bad guy is laughing, right? Smoking a cigarette, watching this, laughing. And eventually the kid can't hang, and it's his older brother is the thing that's on his shoulders. So eventually the kid can't hang out anymore, and he, he crumbles to his knees. And the old guy, the bad guy, as he crumbles to his knees, he takes a harmonica and he sticks it in his mouth. Well, the rest of the movie, he had that harmonica with him. And finally he kills the bad guy at the end of the movie, and he puts the harmonica back in his mouth. Nobody ever was ever tougher than Charles Bronson. That's a good one. Yeah. He did a movie. He did a movie. Uh, I think it was back in the maybe early '80s, '70s, early '80s. If you never saw, it's it called Hard Times. Yes. Where he was a street fighter, yeah. like a professional type street fighter, street fighter for money, back during the depression. A pugilist. And a pugilist. The crazy part about it is the guy could knock you out without saying a word yeah everybody's talking right everybody talking talk. this guy he never said much but he was scary he oh, had a friend. scary yeah he was married so to that's Jill my Ireland. guy that that's who i would choose right. for the r540 right. he was married to jill ireland for forever she was a beautiful redhead 56 um, years is that right okay yeah i think it was 56 years all right, my my. If I'm gonna put a if I'm gonna put a put a tough guy on um, on uh, R540, I'm putting Bruce Lee. Quietly, just, I mean, Bruce Lee brought a whole different type of toughness. Until there was Bruce Lee, the dude what weighed 130 pounds or something like that. I don't know what he weighed, skinny dude, but he brought a a, a kind of mental toughness that we never saw before, and, and this gave a whole lot of people confidence. You didn't have to be a tough guy like like uh, Charles Bronson or uh, uh, John Wayne. I mean, when when Bruce Lee came into the world, man, that was a whole different type of toughness in movies. That was a mental and spiritual toughness, a calmness about him. So yeah, I get it. You put the put it down. You don't have to worry about it. You, you know, you, you had some peace of mind. I, I, it's uh, Bruce Lee. I'm putting Bruce. I'm going to hang Bruce Lee on. I didn't even have Bruce Lee on my list of thirty. I knew that this was brilliant. You regret I it now, don't you? Didn't, and, and you know what? I just watched the Bruce Lee story, the one where his son played him. Mm -hmm. I just watched it the other night for, I don't know, the hundredth time. Yeah. Bruce Lee was a... So Bruce Lee... Were you a fan of all of, his movies? I can't say I was a fan of all his movies. But when he came on, you, I mean, he was, a, he was a different cat, man. He, he brought something to Hollywood that was never there before. And like I said, it was a kind of toughness that, that opened people's minds. And Hey, I live in the South now. And I was just talking to my, 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 to my wife yesterday about this. I don't care. You, you, you put your, and I'll bet money on this. You put your finger on a map on any small town in the South. Maybe it's this way in the North too. I don't, I don't know. I don't care how big the, if the town has got more than the, 3,000 people in it. It's got a karate studio there. And in that karate studio, karate, karate studio, there's 300 trophies in the front window. And some of these trophies are like five feet tall and four feet tall and whatever. There cannot be that many badasses in the country. Where do the trophies come from? Have you ever been in a bar and somebody whips out the karate move? It's never happened. I'm 60. I've never seen two guys get in a fight and all of a sudden the dude does the does the dragon pose or whatever. But Bruce Lee brought a hold. I, I, I'd say he's responsible for, for three quarters of those around the country. He he put martial arts on the map. Tough guy. He's legit. He's, he, believe, he belongs there. Okay. You had asked right. me before. Please go back to that Bruce Lee picture. You had asked me before if I had ever had, you know, when's the last time I had my ass kicked? Well, here's another one. It wasn't the last time. Freshman in high school, me and the other shot putters are 
practicing, lifting weights, practicing, throwing the shot, blah, 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 blah. And there was uh, an Asian kid on the team. And like a jackass, I started mixing up with him, you know, thinking, look at this guy. He's a hurdler. How's a hurdler ever going to take on a shot putter? Right. Beat my butt in 30 seconds. He was a karate guy. No kidding. Yes. And he was real karate guy. Okay. Okay. One of the most embarrassing beatings I ever took in my life. <laughs> because it happened so fast. Yeah. I, I barely got my hand. I mean, it's it's an, it's not one of my greatest achievements. Proudest okay? moments. It's yeah. not one of my proudest moments. Exactly. Yeah. And I'll never forget watching the movie. Oh, damn. The nerd movie. And the Asian kid was working the locker room and the star quarterback walks up to him and says, do you know karate? And the kid says, no. And the guy puts the jock on his head. Uh, yeah. I wish I had, you know, I wish I had asked that question before I started before mixing it up with this guy. Yeah. Who I just thought, oh, look at this guy. He's a, you know, a little tiny hurdler. When's he ever going to take on a shot putter? Well, I learned that pretty quick. Now, well, if the it's movie. Any, if it's any... Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. If it's any consolation, I think everybody should have their ass kicked one time like that in their life, because oh. that's that's where that's where you learn manners and you learn how to do the right thing. He was doing practice. stuff with my fingers and wrist. I mean, it wasn't even like <laughs> chops and flips. You know what I mean? It was like. Did you tell him? Boom, boom, you, boom. I, that, that's that's the hand I cope with. <laughs> All right, what's next? Now, wait, I wait, not yet. Not yet. All right. His big movie, Enter the Dragon, right? Yeah. There's something that happens sometimes in these movies that and I'm a movie guy and I hate like I'll never forget when I went to see one of the Superman, right? And there's a factory on fire and Superman flies over to a lake, blows on it, freezes it, picks up the hunk of ice, brings it and sticks it over the factory and puts out the fire. I'll sure. never forget people behind me saying, you could never do that. Oh, but it's okay for a man to fly up in a tree and get a cat down. Right. That's right. completely believable, okay? Yeah. So I'm not one of these guys who, that can't happen. But in the end of Roadhouse and the end of Enter the Dragon, Swayze and Bruce Lee fight two old timers, two guys who are way past their prime. And these guys are right in the middle of their prime. It should have been, you know, a 10 second fight. You see where I'm going here? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, in Enter the Dragon, man, oh man, he fought people to death. This old guy, man, he should have been lights out in 10 seconds. Same thing in... <laughs> Same thing in Roadhouse. Swayze should have had that dude down in a matter of seconds. Yeah. But somehow these old timers can make a pretty good scrap out of it. I guess. Well, I think. Uh, I guess I can't be the people who said Superman can't blow a lake frozen. Maybe I just gotta just gotta go with it. Half the kids in the country that grew up in the 70s and 80s, uh, more, more likely the 70s probably, got a bruise in the middle of their back because of nunchucks they thought they, they could play off after they watched, watched, watched a Bruce Lee movie. Somewhere on the side of their head or the middle of their back, where they try to do the move behind the back, that uh, they learn it's not, it's not as easy as it looks. All right. Give me my next one. Oh, man. All right, I'll power let drive. you start this one. All right, power drive. All right. Man, I got to go with... Uh, I'm going with Paul Newman. I mean, come on. Look at the chin on that dude. That's a pretty tough dude, man. Mm. Slap shot. Slap shot. Uh, one of my favorite movies. One, one of the guy. greatest sports movies. I'm looking at my list of 30. 
He's not on and it. He ain't on it. He's not on it. Okay, then you, you, you throw your list away. He was in. He was in two <laughs> movies. Did you ever see the movie HUD? H U D. No. No. One of the absolute greatest. He was in two of the greatest movies I've ever seen in my life, and one of them was HUD. And one of them was the the last picture show. I don't care. It's, it's it, their movies are old as hell, and they are two of the greatest movies of all time. And this dude, man, especially in in HUD and and uh, Cincinnati Kid. I mean, uh, no, Cincinnati Kid was actually uh, Steve McQueen, I believe. But uh, yeah, tough dude, man. Race cars was a race car driver in his real life. Philanthropist, race car driver. Yeah, I just didn't. I never thought of him as a as a real tough guy. I don't. Maybe I just can't you know get Slapshot. I can't get him and Slapshot out of my head. I. Here's like, the reason he why he was amazing in that. Here's why you're struggling with this. He was more of an anti-hero. He wasn't your 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 Audie Murphy. You actually should be on the list as well. Um. He wasn't that guy. He was more of an anti-hero, just a quiet, unassuming type of guy. He got the job done. And, um, you know, ladies' man, of course. And uh, so, yeah, he fits, man. I like it. I'm going to roll with it. Who you got? Oh, I'm going with Stallone. I I, I got to go with Stallone. For the power drive? Absolutely. Don't see him coming. Just keeps coming at you. He's relentless. No quit. Tough. Come on. It's got to be Stallone. Yeah, I'll give you Stallone. That's a good one. I like him. I'll give it. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that. Now, um, when you said there's no tough guys since 76, Rocky came out in 76. The so are you saying he's him- old time tough guy or he's the new time tough guy? The reason I have a problem with him because and I give him I give him a lot of credit because he dude was built. I mean he was legit built. I mean he was a he was a bodybuilder. And um, but I again I go back to is he an on screen tough guy or is he a, a tough guy in real life? I'll I'll give it to you because he's he's been able to persevere over time. I mean the guy's still in good shape. He's still hanging on. He still gets the job done. So, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll agree with that. I'm looking at the picture of him there on the screen. Um, it was pretty built back in the day. <laughs> Don't look too long now. Yeah. All right. Okay. What's a, uh, the uh, bone of green? You want to go first? Um, did I go first last time? Is it my turn or your turn? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Oh, no, it's my turn. Want. It is my turn. I'm going to go with William Smith. Who the hell is William Smith? William Smith is one of my all-time favorite tough guys, and I have no idea what that picture is. <laughs> I have no idea what movie that is. All right. So I'll give you the William Smith background. Okay. You remember the second monkey movie that Eastwood made? Every which way, any which way you can? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember the guy that he fought? Yes. You know the guy that I'm talking about? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I do. Okay. To me, one of the all-time best tough guys out there, I thought. Just every movie he was in, he just played a tough guy. Do you remember the first Red Dawn? I remember the movie, but I don't remember the the the, the characters. It was like Swayze. It was like when they were all kids, Swayze and uh, you know a couple of the other Rat Pack kids. Okay. And you remember the premise of the movie well. He played the Russian major to come in and hunt them down. Okay. Okay. He was also in one of my favorite biker movies of all time, 
starring Joe Namath called CC and Company. Great movie. And he was the yeah. the gang leader. Okay? okay. This guy has just been a Hollywood tough guy forever. I mean, I think when a producer opens up his book or the casting people, they get a book of tough guys and this guy's second or third picture in. But this me. movie here, I have no idea what movie this is. There's a, there's, there's a, he's like a Danny Trejo, T R E J O is the guy's name. You've seen him in every biker movie, long haired, every, he's always been a bad guy. Uh, he was, he's the same type of character. I mean, you could put him in a, he was, he was either a biker movie, a jailhouse movie, or some kind of renegade crazy guy. But, yes, uh, he did, a, he did a, a bunch of 70s bikers movies. Yeah, yep. Weren't they great? Peter Fonda and all the biker movies back then, the the the, the choppers and Harleys and stuff. Okay, we, we need a good we need a good biker movie, man. Yeah, yeah, something. Because movies right now are terrible. Since COVID, man, there's nothing out there. I just saw Denzel Washington's last movie, and I'm a fan of his. I like the guy. Movie went nowhere. Denzel's yeah. on my list. Tough guys. Yeah, not a tough guy. No, Denzel's definitely a tough guy. I can't go there. Not a tough guy. He's a sweetheart. Yeah. He's a tough guy. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I'm going to give you mine. I'm going to give you the King of Cool. You know him? That was his that was his tag in the 70s, man. And I'm King of Cool. I, 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 I know the King of Cool is. The King yeah. of Cool is Steve McQueen. You're right. You're absolutely right. Steve McQueen. Um, Cincinnati Kid, uh, The Great Escape. I mean, um, another kind of guy was, he was a recluse in the last part of his career. Um, very notoriously tough guy to work with. But uh, man, uh, did a fantastic job. And if you have someone that's going to represent a tough product, like the the uh, green abrasives, then yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd put uh, Steve McQueen on him. I'll go. You Absolutely. Know? I'd agree with you there. Did you know, you I think one of his best movies was Bullet. <laughs> yeah. The chase scene with the Mustang and the Charger. One of the all-time best sound effect chase scenes. It's not one of. It is the. Okay. <laughs> it is the greatest car chase scene that they're all measured against, and none of them has, has touched it. That when he when that in that Mustang was it the Dodge Charger he was racing? He was it was it was a Dodge Charger. Yeah, and he was in I the, think he had a Mustang Mach One. Yeah, he was in a Mustang. When you, yeah. I can still hear that car downshift, coming out of San Francisco, going up into Daly City. The 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 car scene that they're all going to ever be measured against, and nobody's ever touched it since. So all right, so here's what I. My favorite, one of my favorite parts of that, of that chase scene. Okay, usually in chase scenes, you got the guy who's chasing, and then the people that are running, right? And the people that are running are always, you know, just going berserk in the car. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they're going nuts, back and forth, screaming, ranting, raving. Yeah, the guys that he was chasing, the two two guys driving that Dodge Charger. You remember what they were? They were like office workers. They were like yeah. older gentlemen yeah. dressed in suits. suits. They, it looked yeah. like, yeah, they, they had yeah. suits on. And here They're they are the blasting, blasting away, right? And driving this Dodge Charger, but they're wearing suits. Older gentlemen yeah. wear, who do it look like you and I going to a wedding? Yeah. Right? That's who they look like. One of the that greatest. Cracked me up about that chase scene. Yep. The most one of the most iconic scenes in movie in, in our lifetime, um, and then of course the, the Great Escape, uh, which was one of the all times fantastic movie. Again, he was like an he was a hero that was out for himself, but in the end he uh, he sacrificed himself for everybody else. If you haven't seen the for end of that movie, else. yeah, yeah, uh, it was fantastic. Oh, so. he was great in that movie. I, yeah, the last so movie way, he did. I think the last movie he did. Forget the name of it. It might have been Bounty Hunter. Don't know. 
He was yeah, married he to played Allie McGraw. Hunter. Yeah. What's that? I think he was married to Allie McGraw uh, towards the end. He died in a plane crash? Or no, he got into he got into racing planes at the end of his career, I think. And I thought um, he died of cancer. He he did die of cancer. He he got into he got very religious in the end, last part of his career, and um, became oh, kind of okay. reduced. And um, he collected planes, and and he had cancer. And uh, but anyhow, now as I'm thinking about this, well, podcast, that movie. I mean, he was an older guy. I think I think it was his last movie. Man, I can't remember the name of it, but he was a bounty hunter. Uh, his name was Papa something. Oh. And he had all these, uh, you know, crazy people in his life and everything. But he, he was just the classic cool, even in yeah. that movie. You know what I mean? Strong, silent, he grew, up in a, he grew up in a boy's home. He was a poor kid, didn't have nothing. And he joined the military, joined the Navy. And uh, he got into acting just, he had a girlfriend who was into acting. And uh, he thought it might be an easy way to make some money. And that's how his uh, career started. Hmm. So if I'm listening back to them, I'm listening to this podcast, I'm thinking, well, hell, if I'm a 25 year old kid. I don't know nothing about what we just said. I try to find a tough guy. Um, like I said, like uh, today's a tough guy from today. And, you know, you got guys like The Rock and whatever. He's not a tough guy. You know, you've got. You know, you've got guy. Guy. Huh? Pesci. Joe Pesci. He was a tough guy. Yeah. Joe Pesci's yeah. a tough guy. Yeah, but he's. Uh, he's I, I know he's it. played some funny parts, yeah. but he's a tough guy. I mean, you look at some of his movies. Yeah. He was a he was a tough guy. But okay, but here's the standard: you put him against a Charles Bronson. I mean, Charles Bronson walks in the movie; someone's going to get their butt kicked, right? You didn't look at him sideways. That's just the way it was. I don't know. I think if Pesci walks into a movie too, I think somebody's going to get their butt kicked. I don't think he's done yeah, a movie yeah, yet they, where he didn't they, where he didn't beat somebody up. There are, but not by him. He's going to tell somebody else to do it. All right. Let me ask Let's you a question. Here. When I was putting my list together, I came up with you know I wanted to come up with tough guys, but I was looking at my list and you got tough guys, you got mean guys. And you got crazy guys like Gary Busey and Christopher Walken. Where do you put them? They're I put them guys. in the crazy category. Yeah, yeah. You don't know if they're going to buy you a beer or beat the crap out of you. Yeah. So Rob, there you go. There's our there there's our fooling around. But both of us are movie buffs. Um, it's interesting that we had some of the same guys on the same list. Uh, don't feel bad that you missed out on two really important ones and you blew it, but that's okay. We all have our own opinions uh, oh, with Bruce know. Lee and, uh, and, J- and Jim Brown. I'll give you so, a Jim Brown, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you Bruce Lee. No. I, I should have had him on my list of 30, but not my, not my top five. All right. All right. Well, this is kind of fun, especially because, like I said, we're movie buffs and uh, we can tie them to our products a little bit just to have fun. What the hell? It's a it's a it's a it's a flooring uh, podcast and uh, we just do a one off here. So there you go. All right. Hey, send, right. send Wayne send Wayne or I, your tough guy. I want to know yeah. if I got the I got a list of 30. I'd like to see how many I missed. I, like I said, I'll. I'll throw Wayne Bruce Lee. He's a tough guy. Absolutely. All right. Shocked I didn't we'll have him on my list. Especially right, where I watch him. All right. So then you can e- email Rob Johnson at rob.johnson at bona.com. There you go. We'll add All to right. that Thanks. list. Yes. And thank you very much. We're just having a little fun today, and I appreciate you listening in. And, uh, again, this has been another episode of On the Floor with Wayne and Rob. Please stay tuned for another episode.